There's a lot of people out there saying that the market is going to crash, that Austin's overvalued 64%. Well, we got nine reasons why the Austin real estate market is not going to crash. We'll start with the quote from Elon Musk, who, who said, Austin is going to be the biggest boom town that America's seen in 50 years, at least. Mega boom. So, David, we're going to take a look at a very short clip from a presentation that you and I were invited to and uh, participated in from Angelus Angelou. Some really on point statistics, observations, and insights. And I think this particular clip sums it up. Uh, let's go ahead and dig in. Growth has not discovered Austin. I have been following this economy for 40 years. We've been the fastest growing city in the U.S. for the last 40 years, technology city. So growth has been part of our community for 40 years. I predict this, and I wholeheartedly support Elon Musk by saying Austin is going to be the next boom town in the U.S. for the next 50. So number nine of reasons why Austin real estate will not crash is that the strong equity position for homeowners. So meaning over the last two years, we've seen prices increase substantially, which is one of the reasons why people think it will crash. But actually, that leaves people with a large equity position, especially people that bought more than two years ago. People that bought in the last year, you know, maybe in the last six months, it's a little bit different. Uh, but that's such a small portion of the number of people that have bought. So the majority of homeowners, even if prices drop a little bit, are going to still have a significant cushion, which is much different. And I think that's the, the point we want to keep coming back to here, Lee is that people are conflating 2008 with 2022. These are totally different situations. Exactly. One of the key phrases that we heard during the Great Recession was homeowners being underwater, where their mortgage obligation was higher than the actual value of their home. We're just not seeing that. And that equity cushion is one of the top reasons why we don't believe Austin is going to crash. Right, because what happened in 2008 is people had to short sale. There was more sellers than there were buyers. Here, there's still a shortage of supply. So if somebody needed to get out of their home and sell it, they're going to walk away with money. And, and we're talking about the majority of people. Of course, there's always examples in all markets where people somehow get underwater by maybe buying poorly. I had a client reach out because she had deferred her mortgage payment during COVID. And it had been about a year and a half and she got a notice saying that like, hey, you owe $67,000. And she freaked out. She called me. She's like, David, what do I do? I'm like, what happened? I, I, I must have missed a notice. I, you know, I don't pay that close attention to my mail. And they sent me something. I had to start my payments and I didn't. And now I'm in default. And now I owe the entire two, year and a half of payments plus interest plus penalties. Like, what, what do I do? So we started evaluating. I was like, look, the good news is you've got a ton of equity in your home. You've owned it for three years now. And so worst case scenario, we're going to sell this thing. You're going to walk away with a chunk of cash. Now, the part that I didn't like about that, the story ending that way, is that this is somebody that worked really hard and it was just barely able to buy in 2019. And I knew that if we sold her home today, she may never own a home again. And that was really heartbreaking for me to think about. And, and I didn't want that to be the case for her. So I was like, look, if we have to do that, we will. But what are the other options? And she dug around and kept working to try to figure it out. And she found a program and she applied. And this program told her, hey, don't stop. Don't pay your payments. We're actually going to get your mortgage company to stop the foreclosure process because she'd already gone into the foreclosure process. And we're going to try to work this out with them. Another six months went by. So now it's been over two years that she has not made a mortgage payment, over $2,000 a month payment. So she has saved that now for over two years. And she's been able to save money, pay off some other debt, and do some you know other stuff with that money. And this is a single mom. After six months, just got noticed last week that she was approved. And this organization, I'm guessing with government funds, wrote a $67,000 check to her mortgage company and caught her up. And so now she doesn't have, she's out of foreclosure. She's all caught up. She didn't have to pay for two years of mortgage payments, which allowed her to get ahead on some other stuff. And she's back into paying on time and everything's going to be great for her. And, you know, she, it, it started because she had a strong equity position, which gave her some options. 
but then there's these other programs out there that are going to prevent foreclosures from happening. And so I think when people think, oh, the foreclosures are coming, they're really not. I mean, there's always foreclosures. There's going to be a little bit of an increase maybe, but it's nothing that's going to change the dynamics here, which is that people have a strong equity position and we're undersupplied. If you've seen any stories like this, I would love for you to comment below and tell us your stories. Do you know somebody that went into foreclosure? What, what resulted? We love hearing stories from you and we've done our best we can to respond to every comment. We've, we've gotten back to almost all of them. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comments, any feedback, we'd love to hear it. So just, just a couple quick facts on this. 2% of homeowners with a mortgage remained underwater in the first quarter of 2022. Quite a low number. I think a lot different than what people imagine when they're thinking about some sort of huge recession, crash, all these different terms that are thrown around. And these are terms that are conflated. A recession does not mean a housing crash. So keep that in mind. Year over year, the number of underwater mortgages dropped by 23% or close to 300,000 properties. So we're going in the right direction for Austin to not crash. Reason number eight, housing starts have not kept up with population growth. So we have a few different slides to demonstrate this. And David, you can talk us through. This is the number of single family homes completed. You can see going back to 1970. And it's fluctuated depending on what's going on in the economy. And you can see in leading up to the 2008 crisis, we had record setting number of units that were being completed. So we had an oversupply. You can see the line here, the average annual units completed. So this is where we probably should be. And we were building for a decade or more too many homes. So we had an oversupply. And then what happened is builders overcorrected. They touched the stove and they didn't want to get burned again. So what did they do is they overcorrected. And for 13 years, we've been below the average. So now we are significantly undersupplied on the amount of homes that we should have. It's millions of homes that were short in the U.S. now. So this is a much different crisis. And this is something, if you go back to March 1st of 2020, I recorded a video showing what was going on in January and February of 2020. Pre-pandemic, I didn't know it was going to hit when I recorded this video. And I talked about how this was 2020 was going to be a hot year for housing because inventory was getting so low. And then we started approaching crisis levels of low inventory. And that's what we saw over the last two years is that people were competing, too many buyers competing for too few homes, and that drove up prices. And that has not changed. This is a very slow thing to change. You know, like you got to get people that know how to build homes. You got to get all the materials. You got to get through the development process. It's a very bureaucratic and rigorous process to get more homes built, especially in a city like Austin. It's a lot easier in Houston where there's no zoning and you can get things through quicker. That's why you've seen greater appreciation in Austin than you've seen in Houston where they've been able to keep up a little bit better with the demand. To add fuel to the fire, we had a demographic dynamic that added to it. So if you look here in 2006, which was the peak of the last boom of housing, Gen X was 33 years old. Well, look at how many Gen X there are at that age compared to how many baby boomers there were. So we were building at more of a baby boomer rate when we had way fewer Gen X that were buying their first home at 33 years old. Now, if you look at Today, how many millennials are 33 years old buying their first homes? So that number is significantly higher than there were in 2006. So not only do we have an overcorrection of the number of homes being built, inversely, we had too many people buying their first home. So these are two factors that are acting against each other to create an undersupply and appreciation in home prices. And so the way that looks is that the uh, inventory boomed in 2005 to 2008 and then has substantially come down to record lows into 2021. And now this will have reversed a little bit here with the change in, in interest rates and buyer demand decreasing a little bit, <clears throat> but we're nowhere near what was going on in the 2009 crisis where demand was significantly lower. You know, very visually demonstrated here in the graphic and we can see just without even referencing the actual numbers, the patterns that have been impacting the market. And again, 
the short supply is a key fundamental and why we believe Austin will not have a real estate crash. All right, before we jump into reason number seven, uh, if you haven't watched any of our videos before, I'm David Shapiro, and this is Lee Abraham. We're local Austin real estate experts. Uh, Lee's been doing this for over 40 years. He was an appraiser and owned an appraisal company for over 15 years. I've been investing in real estate for 17 years, been in Austin investing here for 11. And also we run a real estate team. If you're looking to buy or sell in the description, there's a Calendly link so you can book a call directly with one of us. We love hopping on the phone with you and just chatting about your situation, your goals. We've been really loving talking to the people that have been reaching out from these videos. So go ahead and do that. And if you're getting a lot of these videos, share it with a friend so we can help get the information out there. Hit the like button so the YouTube algorithm sends this to more people and go ahead and subscribe so you get updated on more of our videos. Another contributing factor to the crash in 2008 was that mortgage credit availability was extremely high, meaning it was very easy to get a mortgage. So this is 2007, 2006. And what happened was there is the Dodd-Frank law and lenders got burned. So then they pulled back and said, you know what? Maybe we don't want to lend at such a high rate, these subprime loans. Let's, let's remove that from the equation. And you can see what was going on in 2009, 10. It was very hard. Now, it's, in, it's gotten a little bit easier, slightly, not nothing compared to what was going on in 2006, though. I got a loan in 2006. They asked for zero documentation. It was a no-doc stated income loan. I literally, it was like the application was like three pages. Compare that to what you have to go through today to get a home loan. Significantly different. And so we don't have all these unqualified buyers that were just given loans over the last five years. That is not the case. So you can see this is probably March of 2020 right here. And all of a sudden lenders are like, whoa, -oh. and then they tightened up a little bit more, right? So th this is another reason why Austin real estate is not going to crash. Yeah. And it's interesting to note that the dynamic with the rapid rise in price appreciation over the past couple of years has been in this environment of the lower credit availability. Um, now, that can be confused with the lower interest rates. However, over the past several years, the lower interest rates still have been run through the rigorous underwriting um, you know, that qualifies the borrower more so than back in the no-doc days. So it's somewhat complex and subtle However, the bottom line is that there's been less speculative buying, which leads to less speculative price appreciation, and as a result, less of a true bubble that can be burst, resulting in a crash. One could argue that the lower interest rates are another reason why it's not going to crash, because people are going to try to hold on so much tighter to their home and their low interest rate loan. They don't want to give that up. There, there's no doubt that the historically favorable low interest rates that uh, people have been locking into over the past couple of years bode really well for the economy going forward, in my opinion and certainly the stability of real estate values going forward. Reason number six, we've got a strong job market here in Austin. You can see some of the names that are, are bringing jobs here. You've probably heard many of these announcements. Actually, one of the biggest isn't even on here. It's Army's Futures Command, which is one of the biggest drivers of jobs here in the Austin area. If you came to Austin for a job, I'd be curious to know, put a comment down below, because we have met people that have been moving here for jobs uh, maybe mention what the company was. If you've heard of a friend getting hired at a company that's hiring a ton, there's a lot of companies that are not these big brand name tech companies that are hiring here. So drop us a comment. We love hearing from you. Any questions that you have, throw them there as well. We'll love getting back to you with an answer. And not only that, but we like a good debate. We believe that we're operating from a position of strength that's fact-based on analytics. If you disagree, we'd love to hear why. Austin is on track for 50,000 new jobs in 2022. And that's just an absolutely yeah. huge number, particularly when you combine it with the next reason. There's a strong startup investment. Austin actually has more than half of all of the startup activity in the state of Texas. And when you take a look at the wages that are associated with the jobs in those sectors from those companies, it's one of the reasons why 
the industry standard affordability indexes and the calculations of median income and median home price and construing that to result in Austin being overvalued, which we believe is incorrect. This is one of the key elements is that the sectors that's growing in our job market are at a much higher wage scale and that has a huge impact on real estate values here in Austin. Austin has recovered all of its jobs that it lost during the pandemic and now is adding new jobs. So David, this is one of my favorites. Reason number four that the Austin real estate market will not crash is the booming industrial center that we have here. It's quite dynamic. Uh, there's a lot of synergy going on to the north. We see the Samsung activity up in Taylor. Now that had been reported consistently at a $17 billion investment. That may expand upwards to as much as $100 billion, depending on the way things play out. Um, and then obviously the Tesla uh, investment, why don't you share some of your thoughts, David, on the uh, Musk empire as it's relating to uh, our growth here in the central Texas market? Yeah, well, one thing I'll note is I noticed from a plane, you can kind of see it here, that the solar panels on the roof spell out Tesla. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, he's decided to plant his flag here in the Austin area with obviously the Giga Factory, which is either the largest or second largest building in the country. It's actually more square footage than the Pentagon as a little fun side note. So this thing is massive. And when you drive by it, it's like a full mile long. It's, it's quite an impressive building. And they're going to start pumping out a ton of cars from this facility I think they're already building there. And so they're, they're going to continue to ramp that up. A lot of jobs come with that, of course. All the vendors, suppliers that need to be nearby that are also going to move here and add jobs. And then we also have in Bastrop, they're doing some stuff with the Boring Company. SpaceX has a footprint here and throughout Central Te and South Texas nearby. So there's a lot going on. And the Samsung plant is going to bring about 2,000 jobs. But while it's being built, it's even more. It's like 6,000 or something construction jobs they need. David, one of the things I'll point out briefly here, and we do go into detail in some of our other videos, is that there's a real synergy among various industries and sectors. Obviously, Samsung, Tesla, um, high-end tech, but we also have um, the film industry, which uh, announced two major recording studios, more in the Southern market, uh, that is adding a different flavor to our infrastructure. And then I think going forward, as we look at logistics, moving people and objects around from place to place, especially in light of the supply chain issues and just the overall response to globalization and all of that kind of stuff. The I-35 corridor, I believe, has firmly established itself in the EV sector, the automotive industry, with down in the San Antonio area in particular, being a hotbed of that EV technology, developing manufacturing and all that. A lot going on with Austin being an industrial hub for not only the country, but ultimately likely for the, uh, for the planet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the other thing is that it already is a hub for semiconductors. We already have right. a Samsung site here. I believe it's been in operation since the mid to late nineties, building semiconductors, fabricating, I guess would be the correct term. They call them fabs. And so they're adding this one, uh, national instruments, Texas instruments, Micron. There's lots of companies that have footprints here. Micron is a, reportedly scouting for their next fab in the area. It's been rumored it's going to be near San Marcos, but you know, nothing's been announced yet. So there's a lot going on. And so once there's a footprint for semiconductors, for example, that means there's an educated and skilled workforce for it here. And what's going on right now with semiconductors in the U.S. is unprecedented. We're building five major semiconductor plants, potentially two of which are near here. There's one in DFW. So three out of the five being in Texas, another one's essentially going to be in like Ohio, I think it was, and one in the Phoenix area, if I'm remembering correctly. So, but three out of the five potentially here within just a couple hours of Austin, which is pretty interesting. And that's because mostly of the skilled workforce that already exists. Of course, the conditions in terms of the economics of it and the weather and the other things that are needed are also prime here in, in the Austin area. So the next reason that we believe the Austin real estate market will not crash is the expanding commute 
less frequent visits to work. You know, we saw some interesting numbers, which I think may be overstated, but uh, just citing what the report said is that 30 percent of Austin workers are commuting from the greater San Antonio area. And so that threshold increase for how far people are willing to drive for work, uh, going into work less frequently, those tend to add stability to the demand side of the equation um, and add fuel to the fire of the Austin real estate market because people can buy in locations further and further from downtown and still support our economy. Number two, educated workforce. I think this for me, you know, having graduated college, I was living in New York City at the time and started looking around like what cities offer what I'm really looking for. And I love New York, but when I looked around at, okay, I wanted something a little bit warmer and I looked at San Diego, Miami and Austin. And it just was like, this Austin place seems pretty cool. I'm going to go check it out. And it's a pretty easy place to come to, start making friends, and then you know you don't even know how long you're going to stay. The next thing you know, you're here 11 years like me. Uh, just love it here. And I think that's one of the amazing things about Austin is it's a really easy place for recent college grads to move. And with almost 400,000 college students in a 100-mile radius, it becomes the mecca for these young professionals to move to. Because when you're looking around at all your options, of course, there's other cities that are going to pull you. Like maybe it's in L.A. or San Francisco, New York, Boston. But Austin is a lower living expense than all of those. It has better weather than some of them. It's got more going on. Well, you know, maybe not than New York or L.A., but there's certainly a ton going on here, more than anybody could ever do in a lifetime. And it's it's a condensed city. I mean, there's just so many reasons why me as a as a recent college grad, why I moved here and why others are making the same decision. And so that really highly educated workforce is what's drawing all these tech companies because they're looking at some of these other cities that I mentioned and saying, wait, Austin's just as educated and it's a lower cost to employ people there. Okay, seems like a no brainer to start moving jobs to the Austin area. And it's cyclical because as the talent moves here and the jobs move here, then more talent, then more jobs, more talent. And it just, we, we gain momentum and that's what's been happening over the last decade. And really now in just the last couple of years is where it's reached a national and even global scale. And the number one reason why the Austin real estate market's not going to crash is people just keep moving here. Yeah, it's as simple as supply and demand. Uh, last time we checked the numbers, the Austin MSA had three of the five fastest growing cities in the United States, uh, right along that I-35 corridor. And it doesn't get more complicated than that. More people, more demand, more need for housing, couple that with more jobs, educated workforce, the inbound migration of technology, put all the pieces together. And that's what we're doing this video for, which is to summarize the top nine reasons why we believe the Austin real estate market will not crash. And it's hard because there's a lot of rhetoric, a lot of people out there talking about how it's going to crash. And, you know, you kind of get glued to that news. Sometimes I even catch myself listening to some of those videos or podcasts and, and I'm like, uh Oh, is it going to crash? So, you know, if that's how you're feeling after listening to some of that stuff, hopefully we could be the voice of reason here to show you all the reasons why it won't crash. And I think this market is going to turn around a lot quicker. I mean, we, we're not we're not seeing anything go down, but I think people are expecting that and they're waiting and they're like, oh, I'm going to wait six months. Or I'm going to wait a year. And then all of a sudden I'm going to buy at this great discount. Well, what's going to happen is sentiment's going to turn so quickly and all of a sudden it's going to be back to, oh my gosh, I got to get in. I got, you know, and, and you would have missed that opportunity. This is your opportunity to buy. Buy on fear, right, Lee? And, I and so agree with that's that how, wholeheartedly. And if that's how you're feeling right now when you're watching those other videos, you got to dig into this to the dig deeper and just understand that that is the moment where it's the time to buy. You're never going to time the market right. So don't worry if you don't hit the exact top or, to, or exact bottom of selling or buying. But you just got to get in and have a long term outlook. We, we uh, published our for, buyer's guide on the 14 steps to buying in uncertain times. And I talk about some of these things. So go ahead in the description and uh, register so you can download that buyer's guide and we'll send it to you and go ahead and comment and let us know like what have you been seeing out there in terms of videos that are talking about um, the market how are you feeling about the market and let us know um, if after watching this you feel any differently 
So David, we started this presentation by referencing um, Angelus Angelou and his very informative report. And one of the things that struck me was the final takeaway that he offered to the group. I often say housing prices are coming down. This may be an opportunity to buy. I've always said, if you're renting, buy a house. Um, you know, first, you're not going to be able to afford the rents <laughs> longer term, or the housing prices. This community, the way it's gone in the next three, four years, the housing prices here will be no different than in the Silicon Valley. Um, so let's brace ourselves what is coming. Our population is about 2.5 uh, million. I expect that we will be... Uh, 4.2, 4.3 million by the year 2040. Which essentially was saying that by now in Austin, because in four years, the prices are going to look like what Silicon Valley looks like today. In other words, he was kind of setting a ceiling, if you will, or a target where our prices are going to be in four years. And I thought that was fairly poignant. I think people feel like they've missed out on the growth in Austin. And what I've been telling people for several years now is the story is in the early days. There's still a ton of opportunity out there. That's why I'm, I'm not selling. I'm continuing to buy because I see the potential here, even just over the next couple of years, but certainly long term. I think people have a really hard time with this. There's recency bias in many ways. But I look back at what people were buying real estate for in New York City in the 60s. And you know, you would have thought in 60, you know, you buy something for 50K and then all of a sudden it's worth 200K and you're like, holy, sh you know, I should have bought 10 years ago, 20 years ago, I missed out. Well, those same properties are now worth over a million dollars. So there's still that to come. And there's this frame of reference issue where people look at something like, well, that's selling for 700,000 today. I can see it getting to a million, but 2 million, that's impossible. It's not, it's not, it's compound growth and it's very possible. So we're still in the early stages. I love this quote from him. He says it great. And I think there's still a ton of opportunity out there and you just got to avoid trying to time markets and wait for the crash. Cause I've got people that have been waiting for the crash in Austin for the last seven years and it hasn't come and they've missed out on a lot of growth. So don't, don't be that person. Just when the timing is right for you, get in and then hold for the long term. And that's always been the lesson in, in real estate and investing in general. Thanks for joining us on the top nine reasons why the Austin real estate market is not gonna crash. Again, if you got a lot out of this, please like the video, share it with a friend, go ahead and comment and don't hesitate to reach out to us. There's a link in the description if you'd like to chat with us about buying or selling here in the Austin metro area. And again, go ahead and subscribe so you can get updated for our next videos coming out weekly. And we hope to see you around town sometime soon. Thanks, everybody. Bye.